Hello, welcome to Six Minute English. I'm Neil, and I'm Harry. Now, Harry, have you ever taken a selfie? That's a photo of yourself, usually with your mobile phone. Yes, I have. I've taken them all over London with my children. Of course, selfies are very easy to take with your smartphone, and recently we've seen some famous selfies featuring well-known people, such as the one taken by actor Ellen DeGeneres at last year's Oscars ceremony. Yes, it seems there are no limits to the places where you can capture yourself in a photo, but there is a limit on how far you can stretch your arm out to take a snap, a quick photo of you and your friends. That's true. So thank goodness for the selfie stick, an expanding pole to put your smartphone on, which gives you a wider view. This means you can take in more of the background. Sounds like a good idea. It does, but it's also causing a problem in some places around the world. More on that in a moment. But let's not forget, I have a question to ask you, Harry. Okay, Neil. Well, we know that some people love to take photos of themselves, but perhaps not as much as Patrick Peterson. According to Guinness World Records, he's taken the most selfies in one hour. But do you know how many? Is it A. Four hundred and forty-nine. B. One thousand four hundred and forty-nine. Or C. Two thousand four hundred and forty-nine. Well, I guess he's got to move and be in a different position. So I'm not going to go for the highest one. I'm going to say one thousand four hundred and forty-nine. Okay. Well, we'll find out the answer at the end of the program. But now, let's talk more about the dangers of the selfie stick. They can certainly be useful for taking photos from a different viewpoint, and it does mean that you get more people in your photo. Sales of the selfie stick have soared or risen quickly since last year. And they are now a common sight at tourist destinations. They're great if you want to take a better photo, but they're annoying if you're not involved with the photo. Yes, and this is particularly frustrating if you're trying to look at paintings and sculptures at an art gallery. They just get in the way and can be very distracting. You mean they stop someone giving their full attention to what they're looking at? Well, this is the reason that some famous art galleries around the world are putting a ban on selfie sticks. A ban means they're no longer allowed. Places such as the Smithsonian Museum in Washington and the Palace of Versailles in Paris were the first to do this, and now the National Gallery in London have stopped them being used as well. Let's hear the exact reasons why from the gallery's Dr. Susan Foister. What phrase does she use to mean trying to do the best thing for the visitors and the paintings themselves? We have over six million visitors a year here. Some of our rooms could get quite crowded, so we have to find the right balance between the experience of our visitors close to the paintings and the safety of the paintings themselves. So the National Gallery is a popular and busy place, and it gets quite crowded. And it doesn't help the problem if people are holding up selfie sticks. Yes, so they've imposed or brought in this ban to do the best thing for the visitors and the paintings themselves. It's what Dr. Foister called the right balance. She wants to give visitors trying to get close to the paintings a good experience, and she makes the point that there's a risk that the painting, which can be worth millions of pounds, could be damaged by one of these sticks. Of course, you're still allowed to take a selfie, and some museums are sticking their neck out and still allowing people to use them. Ah, a good idiom there, Harry. You mean they're doing something that other people may not like? Yes, places such as the ICA, that's the Institute for Contemporary Art in London, say selfie sticks are part of modern day life. Here's Catherine Stout, head of programs at the ICA. How does she describe the type of visitors who go to her gallery? We are very happy for our visitors to take their own photographs for personal use. Of course, we always secure the artist's permission. But actually, because we have a very young audience, they're completely engaged with social media and want to use that forum to connect with each other to share their experiences. If they wish to use a the stick, they're very welcome to do so as long as obviously the artworks are, are not damaged in any way. So the people who visit that gallery are young and use social media a lot. They are engaged with it. And they like to share their experiences. This means taking photos on their smartphones. And if they want to use a selfie stick, then they're welcome to do so. Just watch out where you stick it. I suppose as long as you respect other visitors and don't get in the way, then it's okay to use one. Well, I'm not so sure. Anyway, it's time to reveal the answer to the question I asked you earlier. Yes, this was about Patrick Peterson, who holds the record for taking the most selfies in one hour. 
You asked me if he took 449, 1,449, or 2,449 in one hour. And you said 1,449, which was the correct answer. Hey. I wonder what he did with all those images. He probably put them on social media. Well, we need to stick to our six minutes of English, but just before we run out of time, could you remind us of some of the vocabulary we've used today, Harry? Yes, we had selfie, capture, a snap, selfie stick, viewpoint, sword, distracting, a ban, imposed, sticking their neck out, engaged, Thanks, Harry. Well, that's it for now. Go to bbclearningenglish.com to find more six-minute English programmes. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. Six-minute English from the BBC.